Hello friends, welcome to the channel Physics by ITLS, where we learn and understand physics to crack exams and interviews. In this video, I will discuss a very important topic which is of solid state physics, which is free electron theory of metals. So friends, as you know that uh, the properties of the material changes from metal to insulator to semiconductor and what is the most important role for that is the conductivity so here we will discuss how we visualize metals in the eyes of quantum mechanics so basically the video will be very much interesting so please watch the whole video and absorb the knowledge out of it so first i would like to tell you about the free electron theory of metals if you go to this history it will start from the drude model and drude model is kind of very very crude model that you think right now because you have all the knowledge of quantum mechanics modern physics but in like 1800 there was no such idea of quantum mechanics only electrodynamics was used and some part of the uh, wave like phenomena we know or particle like things we know but not about quantum mechanics so Drude crudely approximated the electrons which are responsible for the conductivity of the metal they are actually free and they can make a gas of free electrons on the metal and they are somehow bound to the metal that they are not going outside of the surface but if you put some energy, external energy, external electric field, then it will come out and it will show the conductivity. So that was his idea. So for that point of, for that <coughs> view, he approximated, let's say we have this metallic box or metallic surface. So what happens if the electron inside the metal, it will have a very potential of let's say V0. And it is bounded within the metal due to this potential Coulombic attraction potential of V0. And if it is outside the um, metal, means there are some energy difference. If we give some extra energy so that it can uh, overcome the barrier of V0 and it can come to the vacuum. So there is an energy level gap of the electron if we consider the electron is free at vacuum and if we consider the electron is bound inside the metal so it is not completely free but here it was uh, approximated that they are almost free and they are uh, just like they are not interacting with each other so the interaction coulombic interaction is of, of the electron with other electron was also ignored as well as the Coulombic interaction for the electron and the ionic cores, which was also ignored. But they are certainly bound with some bound potential V0. And from that model, we understand the resistivity conductivity from that root approximation, or which is also known as free electron theory of gas, metal theory of gas metals or metal electrons. So next, since this kind of um, model could not explain many things just like specific heat and many more details, it cannot even classify different materials and could not give exact properties of the materials and then Sommerfeld come into the picture. So Sommerfeld gave the model with this kind of assumption with a quantum mechanical model. So Sommerfeld, what he has done, he proposed that instead of this finite barrier of metal, it be not, let's say, the metallic box as an infinite potential box. So if we first treat it as a one-dimensional potential box, so Sommerfeld tells that, let's say we have an infinite potential box as the metal, an electron is bound inside the metallic one-dimensional potential box. So think like this way, so I'm going to treat this model quantum mechanically. Why I say that? Because he took the potential V of x is 0 for x is 0 to L. Like say we define the di dimension 0 to L and V equals to infinite for x is less than or equal to 0 or x is greater than or equal to L. And what he has done, he tried to solve the Schrodinger equation of quantum mechanics just to check the energy levels. The Drude model was based on the classical theory, kinetic energy and classical theory electrodynamics. 
and solved for GTD quantum mechanically and he did these particles say electrons inside the box and once he solved the Schrodinger equation so he put this uh, Schrodinger equation for this potential so d2 sin dx2 plus 2m by h cross square e n minus b sin n equals to 0 so after solving this we know for the one dimensional box potential we will have psi the wave function value can be written as root 2 by L sin n by x by L since we have the length of 0 to L. And the energy eigenvalue can be written as n square h square by 8m L square. So if we plot this uh, en value and we will get this parabola. So let's say we will have different values of k, discrete values of k. So these are discretized. So en values are quantized, discretized instead of a uh, uh, whole range of energy values, we right now have n number of energy values where n can start from 1, 2, 3, they are all quantized. Okay, so now in the for the next case, uh, since we have a metal, so it is a real case, so it is not one dimensional. So he approximated this, let's say we deal it as a three dimensional potential box, not a one dimensional potential box. So he just exactly calculated the same thing, everything with the three dimensional uh, geometry. So for that he gave this psi of k which is a function of right now r not x and it will be root over 8 by l cube sin n pi n x x by l sin pi n y uh, l m y y by l and sin pi n z z by l. And <coughs> you can also write this as a 1 by uh, root over b and this is equal to the power iota k dot r. So it's an electronic wave function inside the 3D metal box. And uh, if we solve the energy eigenvalue, then we will get for the three dimension, we will get EK value as, this is also quantized, that is h square by h cross square by twice m, kx square plus ky square plus kj square. Now here is an important concept of Fermi sphere occur. So many of the students don't know why we call it how do you construct Fermi sphere and how do you construct Fermi energy level? So here we are talking about electrons. So let's come to the scenario of metal. We have a metallic box that is 3D metallic box, 3D potential box, and we have to fill the uh, fill the energy levels. Okay. And next you have to for n equals to one, n equals to two, n equals to three. You have to consider the Pauli exclusion principle to fill the energy levels because electrons are fermions. So if you put one electron uh, spin up then you will put another electron spin down and similarly you put another spin up spin down. So each level contains two different two electrons having opposite spins due to the Pauli exclusion principle and then once you completely fill the energy level and that will lead to the EF that is Fermi energy level. And if you would like to plot it in the k space, how do you plot it? So look at this equation. This ek is a constant, right? So this is kx squared. This is also constant. This is also constant. So kx squared plus ky squared plus kz squared is a constant. So this is equation of what? Equation of sphere and with the radius of kx, ky, and kz. And this sphere surface gives you the value of EF, Fermi energy. So this is the Fermi sphere and this is the Fermi surface. And this is shows the all closely, uh, uh, closely, uh, completely filled valence band at zero Kelvin. So this is the physics ex explanation of Fermi energy level, Fermi sphere, which denotes the complete occupancy of electrons at uh, zero, zeroth level, zero Kelvin, because it is the uh, highest occupied level at zero Kelvin, and it constructs the spheres, and this is called the Fermi surf uh, sphere, and the surface is called as Fermi surface. So that is the physics of the Sommerfeld model that can explain the uh, physics of Fermi energy and physics of uh, metallic uh, metallic model just like three dimensional and it can give us many different other 
phenomena like Fermi level and how do you fill up the electrons. And this is a quantum mechanical model because here we are solving Schrodinger equation and also we follow the quantum mechanical statistics that is Pauli uh, FD statistics following Pauli exclusion principle. And this model also could uh, give you some uh, benefits like it can explain uh, uh, CV, it can explain uh, different uh, conductivity of the metals but it cannot differentiate the properties of the material. It cannot differentiate the properties of the metal semiconductor dielectric and then the chronic penny model will come into the picture and tell you the exact scenario what is happening inside the metal or inside the material that can be further useful to distinguish between the properties of the material. So friends, I hope this kind of concepts you like it and please do share yeah? do share our, uh, our video and subscribe to Garlo. Taki hame bhi acha lage, thoda sa motivation mil jai. Okay, to agle video mein baat karte hai. Bye bye.